All right, here we are. You're listening to the Living Mandala Podcast. My name is Ara. Yeah, and we are on quite the adventure. Just a couple more episodes left. I'm here with Bill Barnard, um, professor at SMU here in Dallas, Southern Methodist University, Religious Studies. And we have been uh, one by one going through each of the chakras and how, you know, it's like a little bit of a dialogue, you know, kind of about the chakra itself and then, you know, sort of bringing it back to an area of the house and home. Like, how does that, how does that chakra manifest in my life, in my house, in a practical way that I can, you know, I don't know, the premise would be like, have a dialogue, you know, kind of, you know, with yourself to optimize yourself, to harmonize yourself through and with your house. Because, you know, that's what you're surrounded in. And so these are just different ways to think about, you know, living in harmony with your with your home. Um, so thank you, Bill, again and again. Uh, this has been so interesting, cool. So we are at the crown chakra this time, the crown chakra. Okay, let's do it. Right. I hope hope you should all feel honestly because we all have this, you know, this sense of awe up here. This is like that's the you know, sense of you know, it, and the, the sense of just ma- majestic attainment of something that's always been yours, and you've you've now finally realized it and woken up. To that. You know, our um, own. They have these, these stories, these like, you know, the different like Sufi, these Islamic mystical stories or, and I may have also into Hinduism's very similar story of this, uh, little, uh, lion that was, that was, was it kind of like a pup, a little, little just baby lion and raised with like sheep mm. and you know, goats and things, and then just thought that's what it was, right? Until finally, uh, uh, the, the great teachers will expand on this instantly, right? But the, this big lion comes in and goes, grabs it by the neck and, and leaves off it. It, it's, it. And it's when it's like bleating, like it's fellow lambs and whatever. But it's like the, the you know, the lion goes, hey, this is who you are. You're a lion. Well, uh, you're not a sheep, and really, and we're that, so it's that moment of sort of like waking up to like, like out of the illusion of who we thought we were, and stepping into the splendor of who we always have been. What we, we've never, but we've never sort of like maybe not never, and that's not true. It's probably been embracing this all the time, but we just haven't we haven't noticed or something like that, right? Mm. So there's a sense with the sonus rock. It means the thousand petal lotus. So here is some like all the energy of the cosmos, all the thousand petals. The thousand means really infinite. It's their word often for that, which is it's sort of like where math goes into infinity. Mm. It's, it's the understanding they're like infinite petal lotus, really. You know, so there's a sense that all the infinite fluxes of uh, and of the cosmos and of reality are coming together and. So, like, ideally, this is well. Uh, this is what we might call it like, true enlightenment. We got glimpses in enlightenment. Let's have some little like you being enlightened with the with a. It's more like you're getting insights, right? With the with the action. And here is like traditionally, this would be like full enlightenment, just to be really established in the sahasra, right? Now, so and, and so in the time tradition, a lot of things is talked about. You know, the kundalini, which is we talked about, which is you know, um, latent in the muladhara and then awakens and begins to sort of go upwards in a movement to uh, and opening up all the, the chakras of the call like the serpent power because there's sort of like this sort of helix motion of, of like almost like two serpents interweaving around each chakra, right? And, and so this, this sense of that serpentine sort of opening and unflowering within us of that kundalini energy, but the, the a goal in a lot of these uh, sort of the more classic yoga thing is like to for Kundalini to is it, I'm saying the female way to embrace her her love Shiva, and so it's a sense of of and and in some of the traditions that are more like bhakti, more devotional, 
they'll talk about it. It's like this is the lover and the love beloved meeting. So this is a sense of um, a sense of you know everything we've longed to attain, which is to like fling ourselves back into this sense of finally getting there at last, right? So long for culmination of the spiritual life. But there's a whole other way of thinking about it that is more about just, you know, settling into what's always been. And I, I'm going to, there, there, there's that fusion of sort of the sense of culmination. It's like a vertical movement, a set. It's like you're just opening, 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 getting better and better. And better. It's funny, it's also like a skyrocket or uh, fireworks explosion up in the the crown chakra of just like I'm like you've done it I've awakened I'm enlightened right so it has that sort of sense of like full flowering of our being there right mm -hmm. um, but that's just a sense of like I've become enlightened right so I wasn't enlightened before and now I've become enlightened I just also though from this tradition which again again I may. Just, just for almost arbitrary things, when we're talking about like the eighth or the inner, not the eighth chakra, but you know that sort of the energy field, the auric field. You know that that it's that sense of connectedness of everything. So this, so to me, the sahasra more classically is like it's a pinnacle of attainment. It's like you are getting what you've long. You know, you are waking up. To ironically, again, paradoxically, and this is what linked to what we're talking, we'll talk about next. You know, you're waking up to what you've always been. This it's like to your own true nature that you've never really lost. And so it has that sense of recognition in its deepest levels of why you're here, an explosive joy about with that discovery. Now, is psychedelic experience in crown or ajna? I would say psychedelic, which should be in all the chakras, because we are embodied beings. Well, that's and, fair, but I'm maybe visionary experience. Well, visionary, like the mirror science and things like this. And I think anyway, I do. I think I got a blur because there's you know because the crown chakra also. I mean, currently, if I'm not, if I've got this wrong, but it also feels like it's it's like that is that's the little breathing tube to like whoa the beyond the beyond the beyond beyond you know. That's right. She's. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like that's a little so psychedelic experience, you know, can often have that feeling of of, you know, working with a beyond the beyond beyond. Oh, without you know? a doubt, without a doubt, and yet also the open Ajahn chakra with it with a sense of a, you know, going or you know, some up for that multi dimensional nature of reality and the you know, and 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 interaction with forms and stuff. This one, the Sahasra tends to be more like formless light is how it classically is envisioned right at least you know so but we have that we have those sense in the mirror sonics right of that sort of like it's like recognition of our divinity or opening up to just this beauty which feels very crowned yeah very crowned like you've been crowned you've yeah. you, you've inherit you recognized your yeah. your inherent divinity you you are a true son and daughter of god you are inherently a buddha and always have been right right it's that sense of Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, you know, this this one was a was a funny one to try to retrofit back to the house. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, I, 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 that's generally true. How is she going to do this? I, I really well, want to get Let's just say the pendulum swings. Oh, oh, yeah. And so the 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 first. Well, I, I okay. So on the one hand, you know. If you have any altars, deep clean your altars. If you don't have an altar, this would be an invitation to set up an altar, yeah. right? To like, like that's a that's a I don't know. Altars feel like a crown chakra thing to me. Yeah. Like they they're like portals into higher realms. That just that's the physical form it takes, you know. And so, you you activate your altar with flowers and and a little candle and you know beautiful things and you know you you do you have any altar tips? Any altar tips? You you have a lot of altars. I do have a lot of you're, altars. From yeah. one altar lover to another. Oh yeah. I mean, your altar tips. I, I think I think if there's ever a form like of a statue or of a 
have some some deity or so like like I've got one you know like just in this room right we've got to the the Virgin Mother and we've got to Ye Manjal the Queen of the Sea and I think about my altar my main altar at home I ha I have like a crystal lotus is my main attraction yeah you know and so so we bring, bring things that are beautiful that open our hearts. And that represent it, it represent those qualities we want to sort of link up with in a real way, you know. So to me, the altar is like it's almost like a almost like I always think of it as like a in all the images of like a waterfall cascading onto. It from well, and you you can activate one, you know, by bringing in the elements. You can bring in fire and water and and flowers and 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 your image and make it nice, you know. Um, and you know I. It don't you can even have an altar in every room. I mean, that's okay too. Um, well, guilty as charged. Guilty, you you are too. I, there's a couple rooms in my house that don't have like a proper altar, but but most most rooms in my house there's something somewhere. It's like where's Waldo? Where's the little altar? You know. <laughs> um, but uh, but but you know you can really you can have more than one altar. That's the other cool thing. And altars can be different you know you can one can be more of an ancestral type altar one can be more of like a devotional type altar one can be more that's just you know designed for centering and and meditation you know you mm. you've got those types of you know there's sort of non-denominational altars uh if you will um so so that would be one thing would be you know ad address your meditation or, or your altars wherever they are um i also linked it back to the the front entrance of the house that's the mouth of chi. So that's that's like the blowhole for the house, right? And the crown chakra, you know, often I, 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 you know, I know that it's been linked. What's what's the little divot in the head that sometimes people can breathe out of on the top of their head? Oh, yeah. yeah. That little soft spot. Yeah, the soft you know spot. No, yeah, definitely was about the fontanelle. The fontanelle, yeah. yeah. You have that story of Muktananda yeah. yeah. breathing out of his <laughs> fontanelle. I do. Whatever. That was a wild story. Um, oh, but we digress. But we digress. <laughs> but, 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 but that's like, you know, that's like the little upper blowhole for the, for, for the auric field, allegedly. So anyway, I was thinking the mouth, of, the mouth of chi for the home, the front door, that that's the, you know. Um, and then I also had down the, at, the attic and, and, and like literally the roof. You know, it's an up quality, too. Yeah, as you're like, really, you know, we go from altars to the attic. But, um, but you know, this would be a good one to take a look at what's in the attic. What are you storing up there? Do, you know, is it time to purge the attic? Go get a rent a dumpster and let's get it. Let's, let's get it all out. Let's do it. Um, you're going to feel a lot lighter, certainly um, by default in your home. So, you know, I would I would hope that it would translate to your to yourself as well, that you would also have a, a feeling of lightness. Um, you know, by cleaning out your attic. Mm -hmm. um, you could also think about, you know, is it uh, put radiant barrier in your attic? Mm. Um, this, you know, while we're up there and we're looking at the roof, <laughs> crown chakra, radiant barrier. <laughs> um, but it's a good question, you know, and that's a very crown chakra location anyway. Um, and then let's see, in terms of uh, the filing cabinet, uh, this one, we're, we're kind of, we figured out we're out of sort of the, the actual physical filing cabinet last time we talked about starting a file. <laughs> um, and so now we're, we're you know, in some other realm, but updating your resume. I thought, well, this is a good time to update your resume. That's kind of your connection, you know, beyond yourself to, to the big world in kind of a <laughs> ephemeral way, you know, just have your resume, you have to just, just pull it out and buff it and dust it off and make sure your bibliography is updated. And so anyway, I had resume down. Um, in terms of self-care, um, uh, you know, you can maybe schedule a flotation tank mm -hmm. session. You know, I thought that would be, you know, a very like, uh, you know, we're getting into auric field there with, mm -hmm. with flotate, you know, the, where you, it's complete dark and, there's a few places here you can do that. It's really cool. Um, let's see, uh, maybe a Reiki appointment. You know, would that be something that would be, you know, something that, that would kind of, you know, sort of work with all the ch the chakras in concert? You know, Reiki kind of, you know, has that vibe. Um, let's see. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know. Is, it, have, is there some sort of psychedelic therapy that you were thinking about doing? You know, that now would be, this is just like the little nudge. 
you know, to, to can make that consideration. I know that that works for a lot of people. It's the, you know, do your research and, you know, but there's a lot of good resources out there. The big maps mm-hmm. concert, mm-hmm. concert, uh, convention recently in Colorado at the end, that's a good place to look, you know, for, for, you know, adjacent material, but, um, you know, but that, that could be something that, you know, would be a self-care item. Um, and then in terms of, you know, the planets, you know, the sun, moon, we're, we're in the Ajna. And, and so now, you know, it's like, well, I've chosen to, to align in my chart of correspondences here, uh, Uranus and Neptune, hmm. because they're the two planets that, um, you know, we, we all sort of collectively agree have an astrological influence. Um, but we can't see them with the naked eye. They have, you have to have, they're relatively new. You have to have a telescope to actually chart them and see them and track them. Um, and so, you know, they're both, you know, beyond sort of what we can see. And so I thought, well, they, they, they line up nicely with crown chakra. So, you know, here's your invitation to look at where Uranus and Neptune are in your chart. You know, these are, these are the two, these are some outer planets and um, I'm just sure they'll, that, that there'll be a message for you there. Um, and then in terms of the day of the week, uh, I would suggest looking up the day of the week you were born. So um, I believe you were born on a Sunday. I believe we've actually discussed this in the past. You don't know, but I, I believe you were born on a Sunday. I was born on a Tuesday. So go look on your natal chart and find out the day of the week you were born. Um, and read up about that day. And, and, you know, we've probably covered the planet. We've already probably covered the chakra. But you can know that, you know, just by having, uh, you know, been born on a certain day of the week, that you also carry that day of the week's vibration uh, and planetary charge. That, that would be, you know, kind of an extreme way to think of this. But, you know, if you really wanted to link things up and understand how things, you know, can be sort of connected through these data points. Um, in terms of the astrological sign... Uh, I'm suggesting to look up where your midheaven is. So your midheaven, um, it's on your chart. It sometimes says MC. So look on your natal chart where your midheaven is. It's uh, astrologically speaking, it's like 12 noon you. You at 12 noon and your most like upright high noon self. And so, you know, I think about that Shashumna that you were talking about and that you know, just that's it just sort of has that elongation to it and, you know, up and out also. So midheaven. Um, the color that I, I chose, I don't think you mentioned this, but purple. Is it purple or violet? Is it violet usually the color associated with the crowd? And the vi- violet or white light uh-huh. or multicolored light. So it would be all of it, I think, because depending upon how you think about it. But in a lot of the yeah, oh yeah, you know, yeah for sure. violet is kind of oh, the, yeah, the sure. default. Yeah. Yeah. So so the color would be would be that violet, that enlightened violet color. So um anything else to say about the crown chakra before we have our final Um Yeah, I just was struck by all the things you were talking about with like but even like with something is it's just sort of straightforward as a resume and stuff when you're talking about like that. It's just like, who am I? Kind of. And, and, and yeah, that, exactly. That's sort of, it. and so this is like, be like the pinnacle at the high noon of, of self identity yeah. right here. This is like, like, who am I in my very essence? The I am present. The I am. Yeah. Right. And the divine I am. And so that, it's like that to me is the Sahasra. And it also just opens up into, and this is what we're talking this sort of like a, I don't think a blur, it, but it's still like a continuum between the Ajda and the Sahasra in terms of visionary experience, right? So you can get into these like literally like heavenly worlds of transcendent beauty um, within ourselves that those sort of, that quality of visionary experience where it's like, it's like an awaken to your divinity on that sort of just almost ungraspable level of beauty and power and interconnection and whatever you know it's like oh that's who i am and that's the sound of surprise i cool. well and you know also in in you know people want to point to it you know in the body but it, you know i said that that the 
the pineal gland, some people say, you know, is linked with the third eye. They also say it's also linked with the crown, mm -hmm. too, that it's like this shared, that blurriness, that it, there is an emanation and a gradation or so, I don't know, a thousand petal indicates a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> a thousand petal, it seems like a lot's going on with that one, so, you know. Oh, it's infinity. I, yeah. And, and, and it's vast. It's the big one. Infinity. Exact. And I'm like, woo -woo -woo. You know, and it's bitter salt. And so, yeah, so it's it's a really profound, and, and to think that we carry within us that certainly it's that presence that, of that light and that isn't, may we all have the grace to have it sort of shine down within, down upon us maybe from above. Because it has this up, up, above, right? And and and, and so it, it, it uh, to me, this is like the origin of any of these experiences, like, I don't think we think about heaven. We think of being in the presence of God and all these sort of these like celestial kingdoms, sort of almost notions of experience, and and of like waking up that oh yeah, this is who I am, that I, I live in this, you know, from a Buddhist perspective, this pure land that that I've created. It's you know, there's you know, this almost unimaginable sort of glory of of who we are that we can't mm -hmm. really begin to comprehend. So, so we're moving into a, a whole issue around ineffability, the, the, the limitations of words to really talk about. Yeah, words are down, true chakras down. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're two uh, floors down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, uh, this has been awesome. Thank you. And uh, you're living, in, you're living. In. Well, see, I'm ineffability. I'm voting now. I'm <laughs> 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 You're listening to the Living Mandala Podcast. Hi there, it's me again. Thanks again for listening to the Living Mandala Podcast. Uh, please know that another series is definitely in the works, and I really cannot wait to get that going when the time is right. Um, if you've been following along with this Chakras of the House series, uh, please know that I would love to hear from you. I would love to know how this process has been for you. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Just visit livingmandalaconsulting.com and click on the contact page. Thanks again.